Hey, how's it going? I'm Business. This league, we got something special. A couple weeks into the league, they made a change to how this item here works. Explore scouting reports. It says rerolls all Kirak Atlas missions using uncompleted maps where possible. This is not a new item. In the past, you would use this item. You'd go up to your map device. You'd open up your missions. You'd see you know, an assortment of maps here. And you would click it, hoping to get one of the maps you've uncompleted to show up with good modifiers so you can run it for completion. In the past, it would change it so that one of the maps on this page was a map you haven't completed. Partway through this league, it was changed so that now every single map is your uncompleted map. As you can see here, when I reroll, all of my maps are Defiled Cathedral, including the Elder Guardians, Conquerors, Things like Shaper won't change, things like Unique Maps won't change, and this applies to every single tab you can see here. Now, what can we do with this? And as you can see here, this is my Atlas, Defiled Cathedral is the only uncompleted map. What can we do with this? Well, something that I've always enjoyed running in the past are particular Kirak missions, and you can see one here that says, find the stack of divination cards. And what this does is it will take one of the divination cards and it'll divide it by weight and we'll show this in a second we have like a bunch of spreadsheets but it'll take one of the divination cards available in this map and drop it as a full stack it doesn't take one of the divination cards you find and upgrade it it just places a full stack on one of the monsters and then you get it it's great now i farmed earlier in this league I boss rushed a character, I played a flicker strike character to 100, I farmed 450 Kirak missions. I then ran three different maps. I ran Defiled Cathedral here, I ran Crimson Township, and I ran Crimson Temple. As you can see, I've completed since then Crimson Temple and Crimson Township because I wanted to aggregate the data into one single map so we can try to figure out if there's anything special to Kirak. TLDR, it doesn't look like it. But we'll get into that soon. When I ran the 450 maps earlier in the league, I received two full sets of Apothecary, as well as several rare cards such as Seven Years Bad Luck, Life Thief, The Enlightened. And I wanted to do the experiment more. Now, as I said, it took me about a week of boss rushing. I would enter a map, I would run to the boss, I would kill the boss, I would collect any Guardian maps, any invites, I would portal out, I would repeat. Got a character to level 100 doing this for 450 maps. I needed a new way to do this. I like boss rushing, but I don't like it that much to the point where I would boss rush, you know, 10,000 maps for missions. So, we have this little Harvest Beast here. This comes from Einhardt's memory of Harvest Beast. You can see it's a primal syscaller. It's one of the Harvest monsters. We can go over to the Menagerie and we can show you what it does. You can gather this guy. Oop. What it does is it gains one of each Atlas mission. This includes a Kirak. You get a Nika mission, a June mission, an Alva mission, a Kirak mission, and whoever the other guy is. Honestly, I don't know. The important one is a Kirak mission. You can see here if we kill it. Bop, bop, bop. Imagine having damage. The ritual is complete. You get one of each mission. You get an Einhardt, an Alva, a Nico, a June. The Junes are very valuable. You can buy Junes fairly cheap for Sexons, but still, having June missions is nice, and most importantly, a Kirak mission. I killed 1,200 of these beasts. And did a little boss rushing on top of that, and by a little, I mean a lot. I think I killed like 1,200, 1,300, something of that nature. 1,300 of those beasts, so I could accumulate 1,500 Kirak missions. And then I ran them. And we can see the results in a spreadsheet I have handy right here. Enjoy the pretty colors. So I ran Defiled Cathedral, as you can see here. And I ran 1,500 missions. Now, there are some important things to understand when it comes to Kirak missions, or just divination cards in general. Divination cards have weights. You can see them here. The weights are something that was discovered through the prohibited library. 
They do lots and lots of data research, data collection, analysis, testing. They're a wonderful resource. Support them all you can. You know, we can open this up over here. You can see it here. They have a Reddit thread explaining where all the weights come from. But you can see something in like Reign of Chaos, which I'm sure you see plenty of to the point where you, you know, block it out on your filter very quickly. Has 121,000 weight. We go all the way down. Something like Insane Cat. The Fiend, Apothecary, have extremely low weights in the single digits. And as said here, they're estimates, right? So this may shift up or down a few numbers, but it's still like within single digits. They're incredibly rare. We go back here. We have around 1,500 missions. I ran them in Defile Cathedral, which has a weight of 34,000 total. Now, what does that mean for us? That means that you should expect across 1,500 missions like I ran, these are the expected amounts of the divination cards I should have seen. You can see you're not expected to get an apothecary at all. You need to run something like 4,800 missions to see an apothecary. And then these are my results. I obviously got an apothecary. Go me. I'm very lucky. Sorry to all the people who don't get one doing this. I had an abnormally high amount of life thieves. I had an abnormally low amount of seven years. And light ends. And dragon hearts were normal. It was also good because I hadn't seen a dragon heart in a very long time, even though I had heard that you can get them from this mission. But it was good to confirm that you could. If you look up here, the weights are the results versus the expected are pretty normalized. So I don't think anything funky is happening in Kirak missions. I think I, I had originally thought maybe there are lucky Kirak missions where you have, you know, a random chance to get a rarer card. Like it'll push the weights of the rare cards or something, but I don't think that happens. I think I've just been abnormally lucky. And then you can see I've attributed the value of a full stack for these cards. Things like Blazing Fire, Journalist, Gambler, Realm and Tinkers, I have zero value for. Things like Tinkers Table definitely have a value. This gives you five random fossils. Five random fossils at worst is one chaos. At best is like several hundred chaos if you hit fractured fossils or something. And Journalist is another interesting card that it does have value. So people buy and sell veiled items for other people to, like people will buy veiled items to just get the unveiled crafts for themselves. It could be things like, you know, I need plus one projectile, plus one pierce to craft onto my item. I'll go buy some helmets. I'll go buy some gloves until I get it. I don't want to run June missions. So realistically, you can attribute values to these things. But for this, I have not. We can show what it looks like if you do attribute values. It goes up and down, obviously. But these are the chaos value for a full stack of these cards. This is the expected value that you would get. The expected being if you just take the weights as normally attributed. And this is my resulting value, what I actually got. You can see the total in the divines here of what is expected, what is what I got, and the total in chaos down here. Now, as I said, I bought beasts for this. You don't have to buy beasts. You can just use this strategy as a way to burn off your Karak missions later in a league. Let's say you're a person that plays for a month two months. Let's say you play for two months typically in a league. After three weeks, after a month, you can just, as long as you had left a, a map uncompleted so that you can utilize this Kirak strategy, you can ignore the cost of the beast because you've just naturally accumulated some maps, right? But for these purposes, I'm going to say that I bought every single mission. Primal Sis Colors, they're not the most expensive thing in the world, but for bulk vendors, you'll probably spend three divines per 60, which at 230 chaos to a divine comes out to like 11 and a half chaos. You need one for each. So, you know, you have 1500 here. Yellow beast, you can farm them yourself. Beast farming, as known by a lot of people, is an incredibly profitable thing to do. So even if you buy the cis colors, maybe you just go do beast farming on your own. But if you buy them, they're two chaos each. You need three of them, so here's 4,500. And Explorer rerolls. This is an interesting one. So when I first began this, and before I had written up the first Reddit post about it, Explorer rerolls 
I was buying two rerolls to one chaos. I needed quite a few. As you can see here, you need about three rerolls for every mission. And so I needed a little under 5,000. By the time I was done buying, I was paying as high as one chaos to one report. So we'll call it like 0.75. This is obviously a lot of these values. So this is something interesting that'll happen if you try to use this strategy for next league, or if you use it later in this league, whatever you want to do, if you use like an alternate account, you can always just change the values of these things, right? This is just a shell. It's kind of the beauty of Excel, right? But this is what I paid. And you can see here, I spent a little under 30,000 chaos, almost 130 divines in beasts and rerolls. What did I get out of it? You can see down here. So here's like my profit. The expected profit you should get if you're buying absolutely everything is not that much. You can see here, you get about two chaos per map. It's incredibly low. So much of the cost goes into these beasts here. My actual result was quite high because as you can see, I wasn't meant to get an apothecary, but I did. And you can see here, if I didn't get that apothecary, I was actually quite a bit negative. I was losing about 14 chaos a map running them. That being said, if you were to have farmed these missions on your own over a very long period of time and you zero out the cost of the beasts, let's say Explorer rerolls have moved up to one, you can see here you're making almost 20 chaos a map, which is not bad. You know, it's not the highest amount of money, but your only real cost is buying Explorer rerolls, the time for that. And this is just from the drops in Defiled Cathedral. And as I'll show you shortly, Defiled Cathedral is not a very good map for this. This is not a map I would recommend unless you want to try to minimize your loss of chaos while also having a chance for an apothecary. But we'll set those back. As I mentioned before, once again, big thanks to the Prohibited Library Discord. They do fantastic work. People should support them more. So I ran 1,500 Kirak missions, right? That means 1,500 times I refresh the Kirak shop. The Kirak shop will sell you sextants, guardian challenges, and then maps. You can see here you get Vault Temples, you get each of the Conqueror maps, each of the Eater maps, each of the Shaper maps, each of the Synthesis maps, and Cortexes. These are the amounts that I got. These are the values of them. You can see the values here are because you can sell a set of conquerors for a divine, three sets of either shaper or eater, or not eater, but elder for a divine. And then this was the amount of chaos that I began. I had a little under 4,000 chaos to spend in the shop. I ended with almost zero. Spent about 3,800 chaos in the shop. But I got, you know, 12,000 back. It's quite a bit of, I'm making almost five and a half, almost six chaos per refresh. Which is quite nice because this pays for your rerolls, right? Something else to note is that while you're running the maps, you'll get things called the ever-changing. This gives you orbs of unwake awakening. Yeah, orbs of awakening. They're valuable. Pick them up. They're great. You also get some amount of sextants naturally from the maps, as you can see here. And then if we attribute my defiled cathedrals as well as the Kirex shops, and you can see here my profit per mission. My expected is to be about like eight chaos. The actual, because I got an apothecary once again, very fortunate, 24. If I didn't get the apothecary, I'm losing about eight per, which is, you know, brought up heavily by being able to buy things from the Kirex shop. These are just some like random doodads that I found along the way that I found interesting. I picked up 13 blueprints, 11 atlas memories, a bunch of scarabs from loot goblins, a few tainted pieces because you'll have scourge maps, three natural divines, three, six exalted orbs, and one rare card in the life thief. There's not very many. And if you were to look back here, we were to run 1500 missions again, but they were naturally acquired. Maybe explorers are still high. You can see your expected now quite high. You would factor in the Kirak shop. You know, your expected is 24 and a half chaos per map. These maps don't take very long to run, right? Like even if you're buying 
the the majority of the time is going to be spent buying these ones and i don't think that's that bad but once again as i said this is just my results from defiled cathedral i ran defiled cathedral because i like the idea of finding an apothecary even though it's quite unlikely but we can look at some other maps we can go here we have this is like the data from before that you saw with the defiled cathedral but these are some other maps that i was looking into and whether they're worthwhile to run whether you can expect to get a cool card from them. So initially, when I ran the previous 450, I thought, well, if we have full stacks dropping, maybe Unrequited Love would be a good card to farm. Unrequited Love is a stack of 16 that gives you 19 mirror shards. You almost get a full mirror from it. The problem with Unrequited Love is it has the catalyst in it. And as you can see here, it has quite a bit of weight. So realistically, for you to find an Unrequited Love, you need to run 10 thousand kirak missions <laughs> and even if you're hitting you can see here this is the chaos value this is your expected value per chaos in chaos it's quite low <laughs> so i would i would not recommend vol pyramid unfortunately we can look at residence residence is an interesting map because it has the sephiroth card this is a boss exclusive drop however kirak missions allow you to drop boss cards this gives you you know a stack of divines effectively but even here, you can see the value is not too high. You're getting, you know, 16.8. And all of these values are not buying beasts. These are if you're just like running the missions yourself that you've naturally accumulated. But it's not that high. So Lava Chamber is an interesting map. Lava Chamber is not a map that we have currently on our atlas, but we may have it in the future. Lava Chamber has Divine Beauty. And why Divine Beauty is so interesting is because the weight is exceedingly high for a rare card. It's 460. You can see even Sephiroth only had 230. And most rare cards are in single digits once again, right? The Divine Beauty has an incredibly high weight to it. And the reason Lava Chamber is important is because it doesn't have any bloat, right? Like it has the generic, like, I think every map has Gambler, every map has Lingering, every map has Encroaching. This has Standoff as its, like, bloat card, but it's not that high, right? It's only 5,900. And so you can see here, Every 30-ish, every 31-ish maps, you should expect to see a Divine Beauty drop, which is incredible. You know, most of these maps are giving us, you know, 14 Chaos a map, 17 Chaos a map. You're getting almost 55 Chaos a map running Lava Chambers. Once again, this is subject to change if they change the Divination cards in here or they change the weights. This is something that I found very interesting. And then we looked at a couple maps that have, like, the Wrath in it. So the Wrath is, an, is a cool card because it gives you 10 Chaos back and it's extremely common. However, it's not enough to offset the fact that there's nothing else in those maps that you're going to get. So if you look at Belfry, the hope of Belfry is the Dragon's Heart or the Enlightened. This gives level 4 in power, this gives level 3 Enlightened. They have low weights, and then the idea was that the Wrath would help offset the cost of running the missions to keep the average high. Unfortunately, the amount that you gain from Enlightened and Dragon is just not high enough. This is not a map I would recommend running. If you're like in an SSF environment, this is probably not the worst idea then. You know, it's still going to take hundreds of maps, like almost a thousand maps to get either of these cards, but it could be a potential choice of yours, right? What if we looked at a map that had the Demon alongside with the Wrath, and unfortunately, it's still just not that good. Even with double corrupted headhunters being quite valuable, you can see here just the total value of your map is not high enough. So I think the conclusion of this is you really want to find a map that has an exceedingly low amount of weight and then a good mid range card, preferably a boss card, because boss cards tend to have higher weight. I don't know if that's just like as a compensation that they normally can only drop off the boss or what, but things like Divine Beauty, Sephiroth. These would be cards to look towards. People may think, people may mention that we have Divine Beauty map right now. We have Underground Sea. The problem with Underground Sea, we go back here, I'm going to flashbang people again for a second. Underground Sea has a card called The Lover. And as you can see here, The Lover has almost more weight than most other maps in its entirety. <laughs> so this is unfortunately not a map that you can farm effectively with a strategy i don't believe the weight would just like the total weight is just too off there's another map that was brought up 
a gentleman named Zealot in my chat. And he had helped me with a lot of like this analysis of the different maps. And you can see here, we've done some things. So Crimson Township, Defiled Cathedral. These are two maps. I would not recommend Crimson Temple because Crimson Temple is effectively just Defiled Cathedral plus the Opulent. You're just going to get worse odds, unfortunately. But you can see here that the value of Defiled Cathedral is like 22-ish, right? It's like 22-ish chaos. The value of Crimson Township is like 19.5. Once again, you can modify all these values yourself. I'll have links to all these spreadsheets. People can play with them. People can figure out whatever they want to figure out. But for the purpose here, it's about, it's a little under 20 for Crimson Township. It's a little over 22 for Defiled Cathedral. That being said, if you specifically want to hit an Apothecary, you can see the difference in maps, like maps per Apothecary here, just because of the difference in weights, the total weight of the maps, which you can see here, you can see here. You know, you're at a little under 2,900 Crimson Township Kirak missions to hit an Apothecary, whereas you're a little over 4,800 in Defiled Cathedral. But Defiled Cathedral gives you more money, mainly attributed to Seven Years Bad Luck being a card. If you just want money in this current league we're playing in, Armory may be the map you want to look at, honestly. Because, as we spoke about earlier, you want a map that has a low total weight. And this was probably one of the few maps that has a four-digit amount of total weight. Just because there's a lot of cards that have, individually, five digits, right? The Patient, which is eight patients give you a nurse, eight nurses give you a doctor, doctor gives you a headhunter, it's a valuable card in that regard. It has a very high weight, as well as this is in a map that has a very low weight total. And you can see here, you're getting almost 30 chaos per map in expected value from the patient. Obviously, there's not much else, so that's why it's like 35, right? Like 35, 38. But something else to note is that it's a very consistent strategy, right? Because you're like, you're expected to see a patient set every 14-ish maps. Whereas, you know, if you're if you're hunting for Apothecary, you're looking at several thousand maps. If you're hunting for even Divine Beauty, you know, it's 30 maps. This isn't that many, but, you know, maybe if you only have 50 maps, maybe you get unlucky, you don't see it. Obviously, you can get unlucky here if you have 50 maps and not see it. But it's much more likely for you to, like, have an average result, right? Now, something you may note is that you can see Hope written here. You can see it written here. You can see it written here. Whoops, here. You can see when we were talking about a bunch of these different maps, how there are some div cards that are on their tables that you may not see, that we haven't attributed weight to. And this is because divination cards have two features to them. Divination cards have a drop level. You can see here, for her mass to drop, you need to be in a 23 zone. For Apothecary, you need to be in the 75 zone. You know, this is just like a normal you have to be so and so high in an item level to be able to see these items, right? There's another caveat to this. Some divination cards, and it's still being researched to my knowledge, so there's nothing like official official about it. Some divination cards will stop appearing once you've gotten high enough in level. So for example, the trial does not show up in T16 maps, the Hope will not show up in T16 maps. Her Mask will not show up in T16 maps. These two in particular stop showing up earlier than T16 maps, but just for these purposes of running red Kirak missions, they don't show up in T16 maps. So you don't have to worry about these weights being attributed because these weights are normally quite high. That's something to consider if you're somebody who maybe wants to run yellow maps or run white maps, is you have to be aware of both the drop level requirement as well as the drop ceiling, I guess we'll call it, where you can eliminate weights. Well, map tier is 75. Map tier 75 is tier 8. So it's in the middle of the yellow maps. But yeah, that's, that's mainly the write-up, right? That's all I really wanted to talk about. You can see here if we pop back in-game, there's a couple of things I'll talk about now. These are all the things I found, just like a nice visual for it if people want. As well as, we go back here. My recommendation to you, if you do engage this strategy, 
is never click any anything inside a map. So typically what happens is you'll run around the map, you'll kill monsters, your full stack will drop, and you can go into the next map, you can full clear it, you can do whatever you want. Kirak missions can be completed if you have an occurrence of a full stack dropping that wasn't the designated quest. So in this clip here, you'll see me drop a void from a diviner's box, and the game will read that as, you drop the full stack, the mission is over, and it will remove, to my knowledge, it will remove the full stack from the rest of the map. You can see here, a void drops, the mission is completed. I went and cleared the rest of the map. I did not find another stack of divination cards, so this is something to be wary of. Don't click strong boxes, don't click Nico juice, don't do any of that stuff. For a little more metagaming if you want, if you want to kill the bosses, or if you want to be doing like conqueror maps or elder maps that are inside the defiled cathedral or whatever map you've chosen, you can use an alternate account to clear them and just make sure that your primary account isn't in the map. But that's for you to decide if you want to do. But yeah, that's my defiled cathedral farm. That's my dive into divination cards in general to Kirak missions. I'll try to include in the description below some amount of you know links links to the spreadsheets links to the discords people use links to my twitch i suppose if people want to drop by ask me questions but yeah that's it hope you all have enjoyed this i wish y'all good rest of your day